Okay, this is gonna be the shoulder video or shoulder region. The shoulder itself is sort of a layperson's term for this entire uh, connection between the upper extremity and your torso. It's composed of, I think in one of the other videos we talked about the different joints of the, the shoulder region. Uh, we're gonna focus mainly on the glenohumeral uh, joint, uh, which is what most people think of as their shoulder, where your arm bone attaches to your shoulder bone or your scapula. So we're gonna ignore for now, or we're gonna overlook the acromioclavicular joint, sternoclavicular joint, and the pseudo joint of the um, thoraco uh, scapula. So let's get on with drawing a scapula. Let's, it's a very weird bone, but let's keep it super simple. There's going to, it's gonna be roughly a, a triangle shape. Okay, we're gonna draw like this, we're gonna draw down, we're gonna draw this little circle here, and then down, and then it's gonna come up almost like a right triangle. And then along this right triangle, uh, somewhere near the top, about a third of the way in from the lateral border, you're going to put a little notch, like that. It's supposed to be straight. And then you're going to erase this upper corner, and you're going to run an angled set of lines all the way up. I'm just going to take a turn, and it's going to form this little, little roof structure. Okay? So that's a simple way to draw a scapula uh, from the, the rear. So this would be my right scapula. A couple quick... Um, anatomic points of interest. This is the spine of the scapula. So that's the spine of your scapula. And it's going to extend sort of at an oblique angle uh, to the superior portion here. And you're gonna get this corner of the triangle. This is your lateral angle. This will be your inferior angle and your superior angle. This is going to be a notch in the superior border of the scapula, so we're going to call that the suprascapular notch. This thing, this little shelf of bone that was the termination of the spine of the scapula is called the acromion. The acromion. There's another little bit of bone you can't see from this view, and I'm going to turn that around. This little... Um, there's a little bump here, a couple bumps. We'll get to those tubercles uh, in a little bit. This is called the glenoid, glenoid, glenoid fossa. This is where the head of your humerus is going to articulate, and it's going to make your uh, your arm right down like that. Now you've got these smooth planes of bone, these little hollows. Uh, oh, real quick, this would be the lateral border between the inferior angle and lateral angles, lateral border between the lateral angle and superior angle is gonna be the superior border, and then between the superior angle and inferior angle will be your medial border. So you can call this the medial border, AKA vertebral border, so I don't mind that. And then like I said, you have these hollow spots. This is uh, referencing the sp spine of the scapula, it's gonna be called your infraspinous fossa. And then above the spine would be called the supraspinous fossa. Right. So those little hollows on your uh, shoulder blade. Now let's let me draw what it looks like from the front. I normally feel bad about erasing this, but you can pause it and go back and look. Okay. So now let's do the same thing. We're just going to flip that over. So that right scapula we looked at from post review is going to flip over like this, just like my hand. So that means our, since we flipped it over, our, our glenoid will be over here now, and this will be our angle. Here's going to be our running up, uh, not quite as straight as I'd hoped, but uh, yeah, what are you gonna do? And then you're gonna have your, your shelf up here, your chromium that's going to come from that, that's, that um, spine that runs down the back. Then you're gonna have this weird little, little hook shape of bone that's going to stick out here from the superior angle, little notch, and it's gonna run out like that. This part, so there's your chromium, there's your glenoid, and this little part that's gonna stick out from the side, from the, the anterior surface to project forward in that pit of your shoulder is called the coracoid process of the scapula. And then this big uh, plane is called the subscapular fossa. Okay, subscapular fossa. If we were to look at it directly on from this border, we would have um, scapula come down, you get a little tubercle here, you got this sort of 
widening of the glenoid fossa, another little tubercle, and then it would continue all the way down. And then above here, you have your acromion at the top, and your little coracoid process would stick out like that. And then you'd have maybe the spine, the scapula sticking out here that would terminate up into that acromion. Uh, I know my uh, anatomy drawings are amazing, but you may have to refer, you may prefer to refer to an anatomy, anatomy atlas as you go through this. So this is what it looked like from, uh, in this case, this would be my left. So you're looking at it just like this, with my acromion and my coracoid process projecting this way. That's what it would look like. The, the glenoid superimposed by this would this would be about how big the head of the humerus is on that glenoid fossa. Head of the humerus is much bigger than the glenoid fossa. Typical um, analogy is used is the softball sitting on a golf tee. Right? It allows a very mobile shoulder joint, but not uh, super stable. Okay, so that's kind of the shape of your scapula. It's held on your torso by muscles that we've mentioned in other videos. Uh, a sling of muscle running from the serratus anterior between the scapula, the surface of the subscapular muscle of the deep surface of the scapula, and the torso, the ribs and intercostal muscles, uh, over to the vertebral or medial border of the scapula, where it's continuous with the fibers of the rhomboids major and minor, which run to the spinous processes, and that sling sort of holds in place. And then, of course, there's the overlaying of the trapezius muscle, the latissimus dorsi muscle, and the levator scapulae muscle. Let's go back and draw in our... All right, so we got our vertebral border. We're running up to our glenoid. All right, and then the spine of our scapula is going to sweep up and then turn our acromion out there. And then our border's got that little notch and runs like that. So we're looking at the rear of the scapula, and then there's our Or humerus. Now you're looking at the back of my right shoulder. Okay. Now there's a few muscles that are going to uh, fill this space. Let me draw a couple of uh, shoulder muscle or arm muscles first. I'm going to draw these in here. Okay. Those muscles are going to overlie uh, the bones. I'm going to erase those. This is going to be your um, lateral head and long head of your triceps brachii muscles. We'll come back to those in a, in a moment. Uh, overlying this whole thing, we've removed that muscle that most people associate with the shoulder, the deltoid. The deltoid is going to run along the uh, clavicle in the front, the spine of the scapula along here in the rear, and then underneath of that uh, sort of that inferior edge or um, lip or surface of the acromion. And it's going to circle around, and then it's going to cap the entire uh, humeral head and insert down on that little bump I had drawn. Go back and review that. That little uh, deltoid tubercle, which is on the lateral surface of your, your humerus, about a third of the way distal. And that's your deltoid muscle because it looks like an upside down delta or Greek letter delta or triangle. It's called the deltoid muscle. The deltoid is going to... Um, helps internally rotate, uh, sorry, medially rotate, flex the shoulder, um, abduct the shoulder, extend the shoulder. So there's three heads, anterior, posterior, middle, that do different things. It's a pretty complex muscle, but its main job is not to do uh, lateral raises and dumbbell flies like the, the fitness um, people think. Its, its main job is to maintain the integrity of the glenohumeral joint. So it's coming, it's all uh, uh, originates or attaches above and inserts on that lateral edge of the bone. When it contracts, the fibers pull the head of the humerus into the glenoid, into the scapular joint. So a good way to work that muscle is a, a suitcase or almost a farmer's carry uh, type of, of exercise. But all right, let's skip that for a minute. Let's go back to some muscles. So the deltoids over top of all this would hide these two insertion points or origins of the attachment point of the lateral long head of the triceps brachii. The, the infraspinatus fossa is going to be filled with a muscle called the infraspinatus muscle. Uh, my red is dying. Let's make blue muscles. We'll get rid of that. 
infraspinatus fossa is going to give us infraspinatus muscle that's going to go out and insert on the head of the humerus. The supraspinatus fossa is filled with the supraspinatus muscle that's also going to insert on the head, out over the head of the humerus. On the anterior surface of this, there's a muscle that was filling that, sup that subscapular fossa. That's going to come through from there and insert on the head of the humerus. So, so far we've got supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, and then there's another muscle. Let's do this one in um, black. There's another uh, set of muscles that are going to run from this lateral border or lateral edge of the scapula out to the humerus. The superior most one is going to run here from the border and set up and insert um, just, uh, well, near the infraspinatus. I'm going to go over these muscles in a separate video, so you'll have to refer to that. And it's going to insert up here on the head of the humerus. That one is going to be uh, T for teres minor. So that's going to be my teres minor muscle. And that's going to give us the SITS, the SITS muscles, also known as the rotator cuff at some point. We're going to go, we'll do a whole video on the rotator cuff. And its importance of holding the head of the humerus in its articulation with the glenoid fossa. Because remember I said it's bigger and it, it would be unstable otherwise. So these are very important muscles. These are rotator cuff. Uh, people tend to injure them a lot. There's other muscles that contribute to the stability of the rotator cuff, the deltoid being one of them, obviously, and the triceps and biceps and the, uh, the coracobrachialis, um, your trapezius, lots of other muscles are going to help. The pecs are going to help support that, but we'll, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. Intrinsic uh, glenohumeral muscles, right? So those are your sits muscles. Now your, let me see if I can draw this properly. Right now you've got your teres major muscle. Right, teres major muscle that's going to run over to the humerus, and it's going to uh, go and insert on the um, the uh, medial lip of the intertubercular groove that's on the anterior aspect of the humerus. I'll have to show you that. And between the teres major. Uh, the pec major and the latissimus dorsi that insert on that anterior surface of the humerus, they're going to be uh, internal rotators and, uh, and extensors and flexors and such, but we'll get to those in a bit. What's interesting about looking at this uh, from the rear is a couple of, I wish I had the red one, a couple of spaces, uh, maybe I can squeeze a little more ink out of it, uh, some spaces that you're going to want to know when you look at the um, rear of the shoulder. All right. One of them is going to be formed by the superior edge of the teres major, inferior edge of the teres minor, and the medial edge of the long head of the triceps. You see this right here? It's this triangular space right here. That's a triangular space right there. Okay. By those muscles. Uh, the triangular space is important for anatomy, um, well, for a lot of reasons, but when we're doing our anatomy dissections, you're going to look for the triangular space formed by those muscles, and you're going to find it as a landmark, and what's coming through there is going to be the circumflex scapular artery. That's what you're looking for, circumflex scapular, triangular space. Now, the there's another sort of triangle made by the long and lateral heads of the tricep muscle and the inferior edge of that teres major, but since we already have a triangular space, we're going to call this a triangular interval. So this will be the triangular interval, okay? And what you're going to find in the triangular interval is the deep brachial artery and the radial nerve. Deep brachial artery, radial nerve, okay? Triangular space, triangular interval, deep brachial artery, uh, axillary nerve, and over here, uh, circumflex scapula. And then, if you go up here a little bit, teres minor, teres major, lateral, long head, those are going to form this square opening, or called the quadrangular space, because it's got uh, four sides. And in here, you will find um, posterior circumflex humoral artery, the one that's going to come through and wrap around the head of the 
uh, humorous. Did I say humoral? Uh, I don't know. Rewind it. Quadrangular space, posterior circumflex humoral artery, and axillary nerve. Uh, so a couple other arteries and nerves you're going to find is this little notch up here. Coming through that notch or over that notch, actually I should show you something else. That suprascapular notch, there's a little, sort of a little bridge across there of ligament that's going to close that off into a, um, not a true foramen, but a, a passage in the bone. And through there you will find, coming over that notch, an artery that's going to supply the supraspinatus muscle and then a branch of it will duck through between the interval between the, the spine and the superior edge and come into the infraspinatus uh, fossa and provide blood down here. That's the suprascapular artery running through the suprascapular notch, but under that ligament will be a nerve that supplies the supraspinatus muscle. That's the suprascapular nerve, and a branch is going to head down around with the artery and supply the infraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus fossa. That's going to be the same thing, suprascapular nerve. Interesting thing up here, if you think of that ligament as a bridge, um, I had someone tell me once that an easy way to remember is the Army goes over the bridge and the Navy sails under the bridge. So the suprascapular nerve goes under that ligament and the suprascapular artery comes over that uh, little ligament is closing of that notch. So that would give you some innervation for a couple of your muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, um, suprascapular nerve, subscapularis. Uh, on the anterior surface, deep surface of the scapula, also as part of the sits or rotator cuff muscle. That's going to be innervated by the upper and lower subscapular nerve. And then the two teres, teres minor will be caught by the axillary uh, nerve that also does the deltoid. And the teres major will be caught by the lower subscapular um, nerve. If you need a refresher on where those nerves come from, go watch the brachial plexus video. Uh, or maybe start paying more attention in class and you'd remember these things. So that's it. What else? Um, oh, also, overlying this to superficial layers, I'm going to have my, what should we do this in? Let's do it in black. Right? I've got my, my big uh, trapezius muscle. And then coming up from the dorsal part and then up through the armpit, I've got my latissimus my latissimus uh, dorsi muscle coming up. So you can imagine my back. And then if you go over here and you look along the lateral border of the, the scapula, so you could just palpate this and follow it down to the inferior angle, find the edge of that latissimus dorsi, that edge of the trapezius, and that border of the scapula, and you'll see this little triangle here. This is called the triangle of auscultation. All right. And then if you were to probe around in there, you'd catch a little bit of the rhomboid major muscle and then, of course, uh, ribs and intercostal muscles. But because there's a, a little break or an interval, too bad we already used that, uh, between somewhere these muscles overlap, there's less tissue in the way, that's a good place to put your stethoscope to hear lung sounds or, or heartbeats or such. Uh, area of auscultation, simple as palpating the inferior angle of the scapula and then following the 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 edges, uh, lines of latissimus dorsi and the trapezius. Uh, if you have your patient kind of bring their protractor shoulders forward, you can sort of stretch that space out, make that triangle of auscultation a little bigger. I'm sure they'll cover that in your um, clinical class. Drop my marker. All right, so that is the rear aspect of the shoulder. There's other muscles we didn't cover, like off this uh, superior angle of the scapula arising from here along the base of the Spine of the scapula is a muscle that runs up and twists into your neck. That's called the levator scapulae muscle. It causes a lot of trouble for people clinically in neck pain and shoulders. If you're old like me, we would call that uh, a myospasm in that muscle. A levator scapulae myospasm, we would call that a crick in your neck. So you'd wake up, just slept funny, too many pillows, not enough pillows, uh, and you say, oh, I got a crick in my neck. It's a spasm in that muscle. Uh, at some point in lab, I will show you a way to uh, release that muscle and it's a pretty neat trick. It uses the structure of the, the shoulder itself. Okay, uh, I think we covered everything. Angle, triangle of auscultation, triangular space and its contents, quadrilateral space and its contents, triangular interval and its contents, and the landmarks you can use to find these in the lab or on a patient. We're going to do a different video um, 
about the rotator cuff and then I'll do a video. We'll get down into the arm and we're going to have to remember some of these things, especially like how the long head of the triceps brachii inserts on the infraglenoid tubercle. The lateral medial heads rising directly from the humerus. And then the super uh, super glenoid tubercle and the coracoid process on the anterior surface of the scapula are going to be important for uh, a couple different muscles. Uh, we covered this once with pec minor in another video, and then we're going to talk about biceps brachii and the coracobrachialis um, in the anterior compartment of the humerus. So that's enough for this video. Uh, leave a thumbs up, make some kind of comment in case I'm offering extra credit for anybody that leaves comments. I don't remember what we do with this video. That's it.